we are having class tonight actually in a Sunday school room of the church where I'll be preaching revival this week. I notice that you have this verse on the wall, Psalm 150, verse number 6. Actually, the last verse in the Psalms. Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. That seems to be so much, initially, that seems to be so much against what the book of Ecclesiastes taught us at the beginning. Emptiness, vanity, futility, all of life is uh, simply temporary. But oh, as we have gotten further into the book, we are now picking up one nugget of wisdom after another. Yes, from the book of Ecclesiastes, God's Word. Every verse inspired, every verse Paul says is profitable for us. And that certainly includes tonight's text, Ecclesiastes chapter 11. Did you hear that? Ecclesiastes chapter 11, we're that far into the book. It's only got 12 chapters. And we're going to look at the first six verses, the Lord willing, the first six verses here this evening. Let me read you the verses. A very well-known passage of Scripture from Ecclesiastes, verse 1. Cast thy bread upon the waters. Preacher, what does that mean? I don't think I want to eat soggy bread. Oh, wait a minute. Cast thy bread upon the waters, for thou shalt find it after many days. Now, Brother Bagel, you'll have to explain that. Whatever it means, it is intensive. That verb to cast, it is a P-I-E-L, P-L stem verb, and that puts a great deal of energy behind. Cast your bread, your grain, your wheat, your commodities. Cast your bread upon the waters. Sometimes waters can be a picture of people, the community, the nations even. Cast thy bread upon the waters, and thou shalt find it after many days. Let me give you what I believe is the gist of our whole text tonight. I'm going to use one verse. I'm going to go to one of Jesus' parables. Luke chapter 19. And I'm merely going to read verse 13. Listen. And he called his ten servants... And he delivered unto them ten pounds. And he said unto them, this is what the master, the Lord said unto his servants, Occupy till I come. Occupy till I come. I believe the overall theme of all six verses in tonight's text can be encapsulated, can be summarized, where Jesus says, Occupy till I come. Stay busy for the Lord Jesus. Always use your energies to serve your dear Savior. And by the way, the, the verb there for occupy, it, is a, it comes from a uh, root Greek verb, proso. It means to practice. The idea of doing something repeatedly uh, until it becomes a habit. Uh, that kind of occupy, stay busy. Till I come. It is a middle voice verb indicating if I will obey that, if I stay busy for Jesus, it will impact me. It will change me for the better. I will grow in the grace of God. Let me tell you what I think this verse means. And when we get to verse 2, it is sort of a, a reinforces what I'm going to say about verse 1. Cast thy bread 
upon the waters. By the way, that word bread, lechem, L-E-C-H-E-M, bread. Uh, Jesus was born in Bethlehem. That's the house of bread, Bethlehem. Cast thy bread upon the waters. You'll find it after many days. I think Solomon is saying this. Learn to be generous. Learn to be benevolent. Learn to give and give and give. And if you will practice the art of Christian giving, you will find it again after many days. You will be rewarded for your kindness and for your generosity. For those of you that watched the lessons consecutively, in our last lesson, Solomon gave us some wise words about how to deal with those above us. The king, governor, the prince. I think I call them the bureaucrats even. Now, he's telling us how to live successfully, how to behave in a way uh, that reflects God's wisdom to those below us. Poorer than we are. Not enjoying as many perhaps of the things of comfort as we do. There, I'm sure there's a business principle behind this. Cast thy bread upon the waters and thou shalt find it after many days. Solomon is a businessman par excellence. Second Chronicles 9.21 See if you get the nexus, the connection. The king's ships went to Tarshish one of the furthest known parts of the world, probably all the way to Spain. The king's ships went to Tarshish with the servants of Hiram every three years. And then came the ships of Tarsus. He sent them out on the waters. Three years later, they came back bringing gold and silver and ivory and apes and peacocks. The Virtuous woman in Proverbs 31, 14, she is like the merchant ships. She brings in her food from afar. Yes, I'm going to stick with what I believe is the interpretation. When you see a poor person, cast your bread his way. Someone who, who, who clearly appears to be needy, give to them, share with them, of your abundance. And, and preacher, and I'll do it. I mean, the Word of God teaches me not to be selfish, but, but I just don't see any benefit, and we don't do it for the benefit, but there it, and thou shalt find it after many days. Let me give you Galatians 6, 7. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever a man sows, that shall he also reap. You sow generosity, the day will come. You will reap what you have, some, have sown. Proverbs, oh, I can't wait to share this one. Proverbs 19, 17. He that hath pity on the poor, on the waters, the nations, the neighbors, up and down the street. He that hath pity on the poor, get this, you give to the poor, you are lending unto the Lord. And that which you have given away, the Lord will pay you again. Have you ever thought about helping folks? Benevolence, generosity, goodness as loaning unto the Lord. Listen to Luke 6, 38. Give and it'll be given unto you. Now listen to this. Good measure, or bushel basket. Give and it'll be given unto you. God will... You empty your bushel basket helping that poor man, that needy man, uh, that believer who's going through a hard time. That empty bushel basket of you, God will give it back to you. Listen, Luke 6, 38, good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, shall be given unto your bosom. Listen to this. For the same measure you measure out with all, it will be measured to you. Again, let it not be said about us Christians, we're stingy, we're tight, we're selfish. No, 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 no. Cast your bread 
up on the waters. You'll find it after many days. You say, well, that sounds selfish. You, you, you give to get. No, you give to obey God. He'll take care of the benefits. Verse 2. Let's look at verse 2. I think I said it'll sort of reinforce. Give a portion to seven. And the word portion, give a share of what you have to seven. Seven. Brother Bagel. I'll do good to give it to one or two. You're missing the point. I would be too if I had that attitude to seven, to many, again and again and again. But not only to seven, give a portion to seven and also to eight. Now in the Bible, when you get that terminology, give to seven and also to eight, it's algebra class. Go back in your mind. Uh, it means X plus one. Well, I gave to that handful, add one more to it. Well, I gave to that whole family. There ain't the family. Add one more to it. You give to seven, then give to eight. For that, now this is a strange term. Look at verse two. For you know not what evil shall be upon the earth. Let's talk about that word evil. It's raw, R-A-H. And it can mean sin, outright wicked sin. But it also can mean affliction. It does six times in our Bible. Hurt, 20 times. So uh, the idea, evil many, many more times, over 400 times. But hurt and afflict, give, give generously. Help lots of folks because the day will come, listen to me, when you may have trouble in your life, when you may go through a low spot, when you may be in the valley, when you may be facing evil, catastrophe, a, a reversal of some kind. And when that happens, guess what? Those with whom you share, the generosity you've shown to the Lord, well may come home to you in Blessings. Preacher, I don't know about that trouble stuff. We're living in pretty prosperous times. Listen to Job chapter 14, verse 1. Man that is born of woman. That means if you've got a mama, man that is born of woman is a few days and full of trouble. There's going to be some trouble in all of our lives. Oh yeah, but I'm a Christian preacher. I'll not have trouble. 1 Peter 4, verse 12. Beloved, my Christian friends, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial that will try you. Don't think it's strange. It's coming. It's going to happen. God will use those fiery trials to increase our faith, to give us stronger backbones, to humble us in our living process. It's going to happen. Listen to Luke 16, 9. It's from one of Jesus' parables. Honestly, I'm going to preach this parable someday in, in one of the revival meetings. I might even preach a series on this parable. Luke 16, 9. Here's the crux. Here's the heart. Jesus said, Make yourselves friends of the mammon of unrighteousness, that when ye fail, they may receive you into everlasting habitat. You befriend people here. You befriend, befriend friend people now. And when you're going through a hard time, when you fail, when you stumble, they might receive you. They might help you. And, and I really think there's a deeper... I think Jesus is saying to us, give to the missionaries. Give to spread the gospel. Give to win those lost folks in Africa or in Asia or South America to cry. And they will be saved because of your giving. God will honor His word. And then, and then I really think this, we'll all die and go to heaven someday when they're in heaven and you go to heaven when you're received into everlasting habitation. They'll be there. They'll smile at you. They'll receive you. They'll love you. They'll hug you. Yes, they're going to know it was your gift that brought the gospel to me. Your generosity provided those Bibles. Your generosity sent that missionary or flew him to our, our foreign land and, and he preached to us the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Interesting. Interesting. We need to go 
to verse number 3. It's an unusual verse. If the clouds be full of rain, and they usually are, if the clouds be full of rain, they empty themselves upon the earth. Okay, that is a principle of God's creation. If the clouds be full of rain, they'll empty themselves on the earth. And if the tree fall toward the south, or for that matter, toward the north, in the place where the tree falleth, there it shall be. Let me tell you what he just said. I believe he just said there's some things in life we will never be able to control. There are some issues in life that we can only plan our best, prepare the best we know, and then we've got to leave it. Get me an amen, somebody in class, in the hands of the Lord. Well, I planted my garden, I planted my acreage, uh, and now it'll rain. Uh, if the clouds be full of rain, they'll empty themselves on the earth somewhere. They might rain on my wicked neighbor's lot, not on mine, but they will rain somewhere. And, and, and in the place where the tree falls, uh, uh, that's in God's hands toward the north. Or to, let me tell you what I think he's saying. You do right no matter what. You do right whether you get the rain or they get the rain in the next county. You do right whether the tree falls or whether the tree doesn't fall. You, you do right. Uh, let's talk about that rain business a minute. Matthew 5, 45. Our Father in heaven makes His Son to rise on the evil and on the good and He sendeth rain on the just and the unjust. Serve Him. Try to build wisdom in your life. Love that precious book we call the Bible and then let God take care of the rest. Sunshine or rain. Hard times are easy to let God take. And, and the same thing with fallen trees. Oh boy. Oh my, the, the tree fell. And, and the tree has fallen over on my property and I'm going to have to repair my feet. Yes, that's the point. The tree fell. That means somebody's got to repair a fence. No, it hit my cow and killed it. Somebody's got to bury a cow. Somebody's got to replace a cow. But then again, the tree fell on this man's land and he got him firewood. It's a big tree. He got him blood. The tree falling can be a problem or it can be a blessing. All in the hands of an almighty God. Are, are, are y'all, are you hearing me? Clouds, they, they, uh, they are, they're not a thing in the world but vapor. Trees, solid, just like an oak would. Uh, all of life is in the hands of the Lord God Almighty. Preacher, then if, if that's true, I just don't know what's going to happen. I, that just discourages me. To me, no discouragement at all. I, somebody say amen. It's as old as the hills, my saying here. I do not know what the future holds, but I know who holds my future. I don't know which way the tree's going to fall. I don't know which way the clouds are going to blow. I don't know which way the refreshing rains are going to come and, and where they're going to do their, their blessing. But I do know this. God is on His throne. God is on His throne. You say life... I tell you what, life, if you look at life that way, gonna do my best, I'm gonna work my hardest, the rest of it's in God's hand. Life becomes an adventure. I think I'll say it again. Life, life becomes exciting. Life becomes a thrill because God is in control of, of all of uh, Lamentations 3, one of my favorite Lamentations verses. It's of the Lord's mercies that we aren't consumed. It came a rainstorm, not a flood. It didn't wash away my home. It's of the Lord's mercies that we're not consumed. The tree failed, but it missed our house and nobody was hurt. God's compassions, they never fail. 
They are new every morning. This verse says if we Christians will get up every morning to look around, there are new blessings, there are new mercies. Great is God's faithfulness. Listen to this. No matter how the tree falls, no matter how the wind blows, Psalm 118, 24, this is the day the Lord hath made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah. No matter what the specificities of life, God is in control of the generalities of life. Verse 4, we'll have to proceed. Get this. Occupy till I come. Remember my overarching thing. Verse, occupy, be busy Christian, be busy. Don't be lazy. Don't be lethargic. Don't sit down and do nothing. He that observeth the wind... The word observeth means to regard, to study. He that observeth the wind will never sow. He'll not sow. Well, I better not put my seed out today. Looks like bad weather. I believe the wind's against us. And he that regards the clouds, he will not reap. I, I know the grain's ready, but I better not go out. It looks like it's going to rain and I don't want to catch a cold. I don't want to... I don't, you can look and find a situation on any day not to work, not to do your best. And apparently a lot of Christians are finding a lot of reasons not to serve the Lord. If you are looking, if you are looking for those reasons. Listen to me. If you want to find an excuse for anything, you can find that excuse. Ah, uh, Proverbs 22, 13. And this is such a unique verse. It's repeated in Proverbs 26, 13. The slothful man saith. Now you know who that is. The lazy man saith. There's a lion without. I heard uh, there's a lion roaming the streets in our town. There's a lion without. I shall be slain. If I go out there, I'll be slain in the streets. Let me give you the bottom line of that verse. I can't go to work today. It's too dangerous. I heard there's a line loose. Uh, I, I can't go to work today. Uh, 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 the weather's bad. I can't go to work today. Uh, uh, my foot hurt all night long. And I'm not belittling a foot pain if it's serious. But so many times our little aches are excused. I can't go to church. Why, uh, uh, my back's hurting in my your back can often hurt as good at church as it can at home. Go get what you can from the Word of God, from the sermon of your pastor. Mm -mm -mm. Someone said this. The duty is ours. The duty is ours. Get out there and sow the grain. The duty is ours. Go out there and get in the crops. The duty is ours. The results belong to the Lord. The results belong to the Lord. Ah, I've got a verse, 1 Corinthians 3, 6. Paul said, I have planted. I didn't refuse to plant. I didn't blame some uh, simple... I didn't look for an excuse. I, plant, I have planted, Apollos watered. That water's heavy to tote and bring to the field. Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. And I'm teaching the lesson. I have labored. I have prayed, I have studied, but if anybody gets it in help, God will have to give the increase. I could have said, we've driven all day, I'll not uh, record tonight, and we could have skipped two more days, I guess, but that's the lazy way out. God would, uh, I want to be diligent in my service for the Lord. We better look at verse 5. There's some things in verse 5, thou knowest not in, in verse number six thou knowest not there's some things we don't know there's some things we may never know but just because i don't know some things doesn't mean i can't enjoy the things i do know and the things in which i do have assurance let me read it to you thou knowest not what is the way of the spirit Jesus said in John 3, the Holy Ghost is like the wind. And we don't know where the wind's going to blow. We don't know which. Thou knowest not what is the way of the Spirit. And the word there for Spirit, it's the Hebrew ruach, and it can mean breeze or wind as well as the Spirit. 
verse, verse 5. And we don't know how the bones grow in the womb of her that is with child. Some things we don't know. I don't know how the bone grows in, in, in mama's uh, uh, womb uh, of the little embryo, the little unborn baby. By the way, that's a pretty good sign. God knows things about the embryo, about the unborn baby. Uh, that unborn baby in my Bible conviction is alive. It's alive and to do away with that life is tantamount to murder. And, uh, and I think this verse leads credence to that view. Mm, mm, mm. Uh, I read it again. We don't know how the... Spirit's going to move. We don't know how the wind's going to blow. And, and we don't know how the bones grow. You say, preacher, what does that mean? Deuteronomy 29, 29. Let me give it to you quickly. There's some secret things that belong to the Lord. Now, there's some things He's revealed to us and to our children. And what He revealed to us is so we'll obey the words of the law. So we'll obey God's Word. Amen. Precious book. But the secret things, they're in His hands. I will go with the things I know. I, I, I will act upon the things that He has made clear. God, the controller of the wind, yes, He is. And God, the controller of that little, un but listen to this, the unborn baby in the womb. Psalm 139, 15. I would read more, but I won't have time. When I was unborn, when I was still in my mother's womb, Father God, Psalm 139, 15, my substance, you saw me in my mother's, was not hid from thee. I was made in secret in the womb and curiously right. It has God knitting and crocheting and building my little body in mother's womb. Job 10, 11, You've clothed me unborn. Me. You've clothed me with skin and flesh. You've fenced me with bones and sinews. God constructed. I don't know how He does it, but He does it. I don't know how that little baby grows. I don't know how the wind grows. And by the way, the rationalist, that's a man that's got to have an answer, an intellectual answer. The rationalist, he'll never trust this book because you've got to believe by faith. You've got to trust by faith. The rationalist, the rationalist won't believe God created man in the Garden of Eden. He'll end up believing evolution. He'll end up believing in some big bang theory. No, no. And you'll die and go to hell if he doesn't learn to trust you. By grace are we saved through faith. Mm, mm, mm. Somebody said this. In some ways, we Christians are sanctified agnostics. Don't take that too far, but let me explain. Preacher, do you know that a lot of things I say, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what Monday afternoon is going to hold. I don't know. I just know that I'm in His hands. If I die, I'm absent from the body, present with the Lord. If He comes before Tuesday afternoon, I'm out of here caught away into it. Hallelujah. A lot of things I don't know, but I'll trust Him. I'll lean on Him and I'll believe Him every day. Someone said this. Write it down. We Christians do not live our lives by explanations. We live our lives by promises. I can't explain everything, but I've got enough promises to get me to glory. I got enough promises to get me to victory over the next temptation. I got enough promises to get me through tomorrow. Hallelujah to God. Verse 6. In the morning, sow your seed. In the evening, withhold not your hand. Still be working. Don't be lazy. Withhold not your... In a way that says work from morning till evening. Work from morning for you know not whether will prosper. This job or that job. That duty or that. Whether they'll both be good. He just said work with all your might. Work from daylight to dark. And, and uh, listen to this. Deuteronomy 6, teach your children the Bible. Deuteronomy 6, 6 and 7, teach them the Bible. When you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, when you're traveling, when you lay down at night, when you get up in the morning, teach them the Word of God 24 hours a day, seven days, morning till night. Be busy serving God. You don't know what He's going to bless. Be busy serving Him in every interior area of life and he will honor his word he'll bless his word he'll bless the holy ghost 
He'll bless you if Jesus is your Savior. Have you been born again? What a question. 